Thank you, and thank you all for coming. Um, I'm really happy to be associated with this film. It's taken a long time and a lot of work and no money <laughs> available to pull it together. And I think it's important for a number of reasons. It's a, it's, a, it's a wonderful story, but also, you know, now everybody's jumping on the transgender train under the auspices of Caitlyn Jenner, and um, who I'm very grateful for, but it's important to understand that not everyone has the resources that Caitlyn does. And just like Kim Kardashian is not me, Caitlyn <laughs> is not everyone. So um, I think that uh, it's a really good thing to have a film like this to kind of broaden people's understanding and empathy and um, to be able to identify with other people that are uh, struggling to make the tr transition without means, who are just struggling to stay afloat and to eat and to find employment and love and acceptance in places that are not New York City especially. Uh, we're very lucky to be in this place to raise our children here or to be able to live here and um, everywhere in the United States uh, transgender people are not as safe or as accepted and uh, everywhere in the United States there are hungry people and people that are just trying to keep a a uh, roof over their head, so it's nice to have had this story turn into what it turned into because initially I don't think everybody saw the direction it was going in and through the perseverance of our director and producer we've been able to to uh, glean the story and put it together and so I thank everyone that's made this possible and we we're hoping that it will continue, pass the word, um, and enjoy yourselves. Thank you. Thank you so much, Susan. Um, we're going to get started, but I want to uh, ask you to stick around afterwards. We're going to have a Q&A session, so please enjoy Deep Run. Thanks so much. Thanks, everyone, for sticking around. Uh, I'd like to welcome to the stage the director, Hilary Levin, together with producers, I'm assuming the producers are coming up, yeah, Chris Talbot, Samara Levenstein, and executive producer Susan Sarandon. <coughs> And I'm sorry, I, I mangled your name last time. It happens every day. <laughs> <laughs> um, thank you so much for coming out. This is like, yeah, I'm thrilled. This is a lot of the village who made this film happen. So thank you so much. Um, and thank you, Basil, for bringing us to Doc NYC. It's really thrilling and exciting to be here. Um, Want to do a Q uh, quick, we have a couple minutes for a Q&A, right? Yeah. Yeah. And, and just to let you know, first of all, we're, we're going to drink at Vol de Nuit, V-O-L de Nuit, at 148 West 4th Street if you want to join us. Um, Cole, couldn't, Cole was here over the weekend for a screening, which was really, really special, but he has a full-time job now, um, so he's back <laughs> in North Carolina, which is really, so that's really wonderful. Um, but I just wanted to say, you know, this is a labor of love film, like many of these films are, so... Just wanted to say a huge thank you to Samara Levenstein, <laughs> to Chris Talbot, to Susan Sarandon. Um, many, many people are here. Kristen Nutil, if you want to stand up for a second, amazing, wonderful <laughs> editor. <laughs> April Maxi was here, <laughs> here a long time ago. Uh, Marty Lucas, I think, is still here as an advisor. Um, so many people. Andrew Lund, I don't think, made it here. Stephen Fuller has been just amazing, co keeping us alive, co-producer, and a lot of editing work. Um, anybody? And Phoenix, Phoenix is here. The manager of our yes. <laughs> Phil Roebuck and Phoenix. Um, yeah, and my friend, friends and family, thank you for coming out, and thank you for just you know helping me on this journey. <laughs> <laughs> getting me here. But anyway, um, we'd love to have any questions for any of us. Or yeah, you start? I'll, I'll just start off with the one or two quick ones. Um, uh, you know, the, the one that I think everybody will want to know about, and you, you just intimated a little bit about it, but uh, can you give us a quick update on, on how Cole's doing now? Um, what is he up to? Uh, what is going on with Ashley? Um, other, other sort of updates that you might be able to give us. Um, so Cole has moved on. Cole has a new fiance, Kai. Um, and um, is in a happy relationship, is working full time as a, recently um, as a home healthcare aide, and um, you know, so he's th he's thrilled to have some independence. It's been really rough to be working under the table. Um, anything else you want to add? That's about it. 
Yeah. Are yeah. Any questions about specifically about where Cole is today? Yeah. Where did you find him as a subject? Hillary was following North Carolina. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll start the answer. Hillary was following a uh, Christian, uh, an evangelical um, metal Punk band rock. on tour through the it's South, strip malls through the South, because we were sort of interested in this scene that she had stumbled on of, of evangelical youth that didn't match your stereotype of what a, what a Christian might be. And she was at a uh, homeless shelter slash ministry in someone's home near Deep Run um, that was also a skate park and met some friends of Cole who said, you have to meet our friend Spaz, this punk rock evangelical lesbian. <laughs> <laughs> and then... Yeah. And so, uh, so I was following a couple teenagers who were all kind of part of the mil millennial generation and bringing various challenges to a conservative church. And then Cole's story just really rose to the top. Um, and I you know, kind of met Cole, fell in love with Cole, and was just really taken with his strength. So. Thank you for your help on the movie, Linus. Oh, yes, Linus, sorry. sorry. Linus. <laughs> so the question is about the status of document, uh, the citizenship status. He, he of should qualify for Obama's Dream Act, but it's just not easy. You, they, you know, even I don't know if you're familiar with Obama's Dream Act, but people whose parents who brought them here against their will should be able to get at least some kind of temporary protection. And he's not been able to get that yet because they require all this paperwork that as someone without papers, you can't have. It's just kind of a weird catch-22. He has little documentation, despite our movie, between the ages of 18 when he graduated from high school and now. So if he'd been arrested, if he'd been put in the hospital, if he'd had like, in some ways he'd be, you know, if he had any paperwork, he'd have, be having an easier time right now, but we, he's having a really hard time getting paperwork even under the DREAM Act. So we're not experts in that. If someone wants to uh, volunteer legal help or hook us up with legal help, he needs that. We've, we've had that over the years on and off, but it's, you know, pro bono is hard and uh, he needs professional help. It's, it's a tricky situation he's in. That's a long... Susan has a question. Has, has uh, Cole found a church? Uh, he was comfortable saying at our San Francisco screenings and elsewhere, so I will answer for him, that uh, he's, no lo he's dabbling in paganism. <laughs> he's, he's open to new things. His new girlfriend has an interest in this Wiccan thing, and so... <laughs> I mean, I'm a born and bred. I mean, a lot of you, a lot of you are my family here. So, but <laughs> I'm a born and bred New Yorker. I, um, you know, completely secular. But I, do, I do have to say, just throughout the the years of spending time in the South, um, just talking to a lot of queer people, there was there was this really deep spirituality, which I'm sure is many other places. But I was just really struck with by this like kind of continuing conversation with God that a lot of queer people were having and, and it was it was a real source of strength um, for many people and that that so I think what wherever he goes there's this deep spiritual conversation that's gonna continue with him I think. Well in yeah. the high school years you noticed that he's, he's talking about the big man upstairs so maybe after this Wiccan phase he's gonna be uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm curious about when you're making, uh, first, like, how long did the film take to make? And when you were filming, what did the community think of you filming? What did they think this was a story about? And yeah. uh, sort of what response did you get from them? Yeah, I, I went down to this community first around 2007 and then met Cole in 2008. And I was doing a general, I was doing a general research on youth culture and Christianity. Um, but when I, and that's what I said, um, <laughs> and, um, but I mean, if they could see, you know, if they could see in my soul, I would be kind of like the walking devil for, for a lot of the people. Though some people did think I was an angel who had come to communicate something. But, <laughs> but, um, what was the rest of the question? What, or how did <laughs> but how do they treat you? Were you treated? Oh, I was, I mean, I was, I was actually trying to, I mean, this was a very low budget project, but I was actually trying to keep it in New Jersey in Christian culture where there's, um, and then I ended up down south because I was really, really welcomed in this small community. Okay. Um, and I, there, yeah, I've made a lot of amazing friends. And so in general, I mean, I was, un, I was kind of undercover, but, <laughs> but, but I, I made some really wonderful friends and there's, and there's just, there are people who are really, um, struggling to open up their minds, and I and I hope that you feel like you encountered some of those characters. Um, and I mean, and that was really inspiring for me. Um, 
We have time for one or two, maybe, right? Yes, sir. That was a total shock. Yeah. How did the first amateur list that we want to talk about? <laughs> um, I yeah, it was a complete it was a complete surprise. Um, I was working with I think Ariana Ariana's are you Ariana's mom? No, no, I guess not. Sorry. Okay. No, I thought okay. I um. Anyway, sorry. Um, I have a wonderful camera woman who's I don't think is here, but maybe some of her family's here. Ariana Le Penne and I were, were interviewing him, and we, that was a complete surprise. Um, and then um, we I was leaving, and I and I felt like um, I I needed I wanted to share that information and and have that conversation with them. So so that's that's how that went down. But that was a that was a total surprise. It's it's. Difficult, but I but I feel like he's a he's a very interesting character who also has some nuance to him too, and and I don't you know. Well said. <laughs> and he answered it was completely unprompted without any real question, and it was kind of interesting that he was in a church at the time when he really kind of made a confession. So yeah, yeah. Um, we. Do have to wrap up, unfortunately, uh, but I do want to thank you so much for having the film here at the festival for your near premiere. Thank you thank so much. Thank you, Basil, for bringing us here. And thank you, everyone. Yeah.